In this step, the 24 volt power supply will be wired to the laser controller to this set of terminals. The DC power output is these two pins here. This is V minus and V plus. So it's gonna be like this, black, V minus, red, V plus. And on here, it has 24 V, which 24 volts is one, that's the red. And ground, number two, is the black. You can confirm that this is the V plus and V minus using these labels here. It's very difficult to see on this particular power supply, but this is V plus, or it actually says plus V and minus V. This one is ground for earth ground, neutral and live. So let's go ahead and put it into this one. So 24 volt is the bottom one and ground is the top one. Always confirm this because if you get it backwards, then you have a, you can potentially destroy this laser controller. Okay. The digital signal from the laser controller to the laser tube power supply will be installed in this step, which includes wiring this set of terminals to the lower set of terminals on the laser tube power supply. I'm gonna use this one to explain the connections since it's difficult to get in here and see that. So the first terminal is five volts. The second one is in. Third one is G for ground. Fourth one is P for water protection. Fifth one is L for um, a high or low, um, a low signal for firing. And the last one is H for high, which is a high signal for firing. This is the trigger. So these two are triggers. If, if, if you have a, um, if you're triggering, triggering on a low um, or a zero, if this is uh, triggering a, a, in a low signal or a zero volt signal, then you wanna use this particular um, terminal. And if it's triggering on a high signal, which is five volts, then you wanna use this terminal. So you have um, either one to choose from. On the laser controller, the first one is DC five volts, which is the five volts first one here. The second one is WP for water protect. That one is the P, which is four, number four. The third one here is PWM, which is pulse width modulation. And here it's the N, which is the second one. It's called N, I-N, another word for input, but it's a variable voltage input. Uh, then you have TTL number four, which corresponds to the either the high or the low. So we have to make sure that um, when we trigger it on the control panel and we get a firing from the laser, uh, we know that it, it is correctly connected. But if we turn on the laser and then the laser fires without us uh, triggering it, then that means we have to switch to the to the other uh, terminal. But I'm assuming that this is going to be TTL for TTL for trigger low. It could be transistor transistor logic. I I don't know why they are using it this this way. TTL transistor transistor logic is just high low signal. And then you have the ground, which is the G on on this terminal, which is the third terminal. So you can take this off and wire it without this connector on. So it's going to be easier to to wire up. So the first one was five volts. I'm going to go ahead and use the red. Um, I'm using uh, two cables for, since there's five, there's five connections that we need. There's six on here, but remember the high and low is only one of them is gonna be used. So the five volts is gonna be the first one. And we're gonna go and connect the five volt here on this particular terminal. Let's go ahead and do that. And then we have, over here we have ground. I'm gonna do the five volts and ground using this particular cable. So ground is the third one. If we Just to confirm, we look at this one. Ground is the third one, or G. Okay, and ground, I'm gonna go ahead and take this insulation. I'm gonna pull it to this end so we have more slack here. Okay, so ground is all the way to the other end here. All right, now we're gonna use this for the other connections. So water protect, usually it's, it's the water protect is, is not engaged or whenever the water protect is uh, engaged, that means you, everything stops on the, on the machine. You could actually use the water protect for other things, but the water protect in this case, uh, when it's grounded, that means that you can go ahead and use the machine. 
So I'm going to use I'm going to actually use the black for that. So the WP coincides with the P on the laser. So that one is one, two, three. That's the fourth one. So that's the one next to the ground here. So we'll go ahead and connect that one. And the next one is PWM. I'm going to go ahead and use the red for PWM. Actually, yeah, I'm going to use the red. Actually, no, I'm going to use the white for PWM. Inputs typically are just white. So now white is connected to the PWM, and we need to connect the white to the N on this one. And I know the N is in the middle of the 5 volt and ground. So that's 5 volt, N, and ground. So that goes right in the middle here. And the last one is the TTL. And in this case, I'm not sure if it's a high or low, but I'm going to assume that it's low. And we'll find out once we get the machine, the laser tube in, we're gonna have something that blocks the laser energy. So when we turn it on, it doesn't uh, bounce around on the mirrors and, and gets taken to a, an unpredictable location. The L is second to the last. So let's go ahead and connect it to that. Now we can go ahead and plug it back into the laser tube power supply. This step, the main power for the motion and the control of the laser will be completed in this step, which includes wiring it to this power supply and that power supply, which is the 24 volt power supply, and all running through this switch, this toggle switch. Extension cords, standard uh, extension cords, there are 16 gauge, and I have already removed this part of the extension cord, the female side. You'll need this piece of plexiglass here that has these, this whole pattern. This particular extension cord, this extension cord here will be wired to these two power supplies which control the motion or the power for the motors and the power for the laser controller. This extension cord will be connected to the laser tube power supply which provides the electricity for the actual laser tube and it turns the laser on and off. So this is essentially a safety mechanism where you're not turning the laser on until you're completely satisfied with the way the mo the motion and the and the the machine is 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 in a state of of readiness for your laser. This extension cord, each extension cord, each one of these will pass through their own toggle switch that will be placed into these holes here. I'm going to go ahead and put this toggle switch in this hole. I'm leaving the plastic on this little peel the plastic protection. I'm going to leave that I'm going to leave that on until the the end of wiring everything. <clears throat> I'm not sure which way is on or off. I can always test that with a multimeter. Okay, that is open line. Click it up. Now we have low resistance. So this is on, up is on, off is down, down is off, up is on, down is off, and this orientation. So I can tighten this up. This should match the same orientation on with on and off. To tighten it, I just turn the whole thing and then use this outer uh, jam nut to keep it. I just turn it and then use my fingers to keep the nut in place. I'm just going to put this here for temporary. I'm taking off a lot more insulation than I would normally do because I need a lot of um, wire to use for the switch. So there are three wires that come in an extension cord. White is neutral. Black is live and green is earth ground. The black wire needs to be connected to one of the leads of the toggle switch. The green will go to the earth ground here. The white will go to the neutral on the power supply. And there will be on the other side of this toggle switch, the other lead will go to the live. So the live will be going to first here and then it'll come out and go to the power power supply. And that way when we turn the 
toggle switch on, it'll connect those two leads, con creating a connection for this black wire to connect to the power supply. I'm gonna cut the black lead a little bit short because it's gonna come, go directly to the switch and this wire here is very close to the switch. Some of this cable will be will be inside the the unit, and I'll use a zip tie to create a um, keep it from pulling pulling out. I'm going to use a different uh, terminal connector with a larger uh, a larger entry for the for the stranded cable. Okay, so I found some wire, but it's not the the colors that I really wanted. Um, I'm going to put black to black, which is the live. I'm going to put red to the white, which is the neutral. And I'm going to use yellow for the, to the green. And that's just to connect from this power supply to this power supply. And I'm also using the blue terminal connectors, spade connectors. The blue has a larger opening. Um, the, uh, the largest you can have is, I think, yellow. Maybe there's a larger one, I just don't know about. But there comes in generally three flavors. Red is the smallest, blue is medium, and then yellow is largest. And they all have their requirements for, for amp ratings. I'm using this, because this is the one that will fit the best, and I want a good uh, clamping on the wires. Not sure how long this needs to be yet. Let me let's check. Okay, so this length is good here. Give it a little more, just in case. Okay. So this this one right here is for earth ground. Okay. I'm not going to put this one in yet because this is at the top. I'd rather start with the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and do the black now. Let's see how long this needs to be. Black is all the way to the end, so this is good. Okay, and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and put this in now. Okay. That's solid. All right, now the white. The neutral. Oh yeah, I need to find out how long this needs to be. Go with this length here. Okay, so this one's in. So now I can set this up a little bit so I can have those wires reach. Okay, so they're all wired up. The Extension cord is going directly to green and white wires to the the earth ground and neutral wires to the power supply. It's also carrying that those two wires. Let me open this up a little bit. It's also carrying those wires, the earth ground to the earth ground on the other power supply. The red, which is the neutral, to the neutral terminal of the power supply, and the black is going through this switch and is also being carried to the other power supply to its live terminal. It's good to go over even after you do a connection. If you're a novice, intermediate, um, uh, doing wiring and stuff, you uh, intermediate uh, or advanced level, you may already know this, but <clears throat> just go over um, each wire after you've done it just to make sure that you've put the wires in the correct places. And these red wires are going to the V plus. The black wires are going to the V minus. And you can always check here to make sure they're going to the right place. The black is going to the ground. 
red is going to V plus, red is, oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. Black is going to ground, red is going to V plus, and on the power supply here, the red, V plus here, black, V minus, going to red, 24 volt, black. I'm going to add a couple wire ties to this to serve as strain relief. I'm actually straining them right now. I don't want them to be pulled at any time after this is given to the customer. Okay, this is not gonna move. I'm gonna do two of them just to add more insurance to this. Now I can pull it and it won't be able to be pulled out. All right, we can test to make sure that there's a green light on both of these power supplies just to make sure they're functioning properly. So I can plug this in and I should get the green light on the power supply here, the large power supply, the smaller power supply, and the two uh, drivers should also have a green light. And let's see what happens. Okay, so it should not be on because the toggle switch has not been turned on. Uh, be careful not to touch anything around here because everything is live, um, especially when I turn this on. Okay, we have a green light here, a green light on that power supply, green light on this driver, green light on this driver, and there are no lights on this um, laser power, laser controller. And we'll have to wait until we get the, um, the control panel on the laser controller to see if there's any functioning of that. You can also test to see if these motors will turn and they should not. They should be very rigid. That is good. And that's good. So they are set. So that means that they're getting power and they are um, will be ready to move. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and get to the next step.